We see them standing tall, painted, sometimes white marble statues in all the old churches. Sometimes they're mortalized in stained glass. Sometimes you're somebody like me who has an entire room filled with statues with candles all around them. The saints. Today is the Feast of All Saints. So we thought it'd be interesting as it aligns with the new moon and our celebration of the Via Negativa to talk about why we have saints, what saints are, and how we might want to make more room in our lives for the saints. Join me, if you will, today as we walk down creation's paths. Hello, everybody. My name is Charlie. I am a Christo-pagan druid and priest of Bridget. Hello, everyone. I'm one of the wild things. It's so weird. Say your name. This one has no name. That's my husband, Brian. Okay, fine. I'll be Brian. I have put on the costume. I am running with the others. You're always running with the others. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Today, we're in the midst of our celebration of Samhain. And we are celebrating the Feast of All Saints. I talk a lot about the saints. I have a lot of devotion to a lot of saints. Yeah, I think we should maybe take a little time and talk about why and what they even are. Before we get into that, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app that you're currently listening to us on. We do fresh Christopagan and Druidic content on this channel five days a week, and you don't want to miss a thing. Alrighty, so... Saints. Saints, when I was a kid, were terrifying because I was raised Baptist. And saints were those weird idols that the Catholics had that were one of the reasons we should not like them. And so I would go over to my great aunt's house, who was Catholic, and she had a couple of saint statues in her home. Not many. She had a, one of Mary. And I think she had a Saint Rita. Not a lot, but still, they were like those spooky things over there. It wasn't until later in life when I started exploring Catholicism that I actually found out like what they are and why people have devotion to them. Along a not too dissimilar route, as a young child, when I was exposed to saints and Catholics, I thought they were Catholic action figures, like some of those action figure collectors where you're not supposed to touch, you're not supposed to be playing with them, but they had the action figures up on the shelf, like on a high pedestal for everyone to behold. But there were action figures in my head. I didn't understand. I was like, okay, cool. Like, Which I didn't understand the difference between a statue of, say, St. Francis or G.I. Joe. Like, it was just like, okay. I could see that. For some Catholics, it really is that sort of thing. Now, I, I, I keep saying Catholic a lot. Catholics are not the only ones that have saints. There are many Christian denominations that recognize a classification of sainthood. There are also many other religions that have things akin to saints that when we talk about them in English, we sometimes talk about the Buddhist saints. Some Sufis I've seen referred to as saints, but that gets weird. They're technically Wali, uh, friends of God. This is a concept that we find all around the world. In fact, one of the most interesting saints in history who lived around the same time as Jesus still has an active shrine in Israel where people to this day still go and pray beside his tomb and ask for miracles. He was known as a rainmaker. When there are droughts or when things are hard, people still travel to his tomb and pray. It is not uncommon. Then you have probably one of my favorite saints and somebody we will probably do episodes on in future, Emperor Akbar, who is a very complex character. And yeah. I feel the greatest miracle is his tomb today is still visited by Christians, by Jews, by Hindus, by Muslims, by Zoroastrians, who still come to his tomb to pray and make offerings because of the work that he did while he was alive. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. He also has a place in Sikh history as well. He really did do a lot of work in bringing people together. We all seem to have this idea. And you'll often hear when people are talking about ancestors, they will sometimes talk about a special category of the honored ancestors. This is kind of what saints are. In Catholic theology, saint is merely someone that the church has done their homework and is 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
because technically anyone who is in heaven is a saint. Now, Catholics have a, a bus stop in between here and heaven, and that's purgatory. So you have to prove through uh, posthumous miracles that you're actually on the other side and intervening on behalf of people. You have a whole system, not going to go into that today. That is what a Catholic saint is. For somebody to be recognized as a Catholic saint, unless the Pope waives his need for miracles like they did for John Paul II, and I am still frothy about that, they are people that have to prove that they are not in hell or in purgatory. That's the Catholic Church. Most of the other Christian denominations take a vote. They, they just take a vote as this person, one of the people that we want to honor. Because a lot of the other Christian denominations don't pray to saints. They are people to kind of admire the role models, people to read. Now that you brought praying to saints, I think maybe we should take a minute and kind of address what is that? Because I know from some perspectives, they don't be like, is that idolatry? I'm not going get, to get into too much of the hyper terminology here. And we could, like, if you want an episode where we use the big $5 college words for a lot of this, we can do that. I'm trying to keep everything very simple here. But devotion to the saints and devotion to God are two different things. And they have to go with the degree of what we're doing. Idolatry is defined as worshiping anything other than God. And I would say that in my own life, I do not worship anything other than God. Now, asterisk. Remember this asterisk. We're going to get back to it in a minute. Devotion to the saints is praying to them for guidance, for help, for whatever you have. It can be praise of the saints. I can sing praises to Mary. I sing praises to Bridget, who falls into a weird category because she is both a Catholic saint and an Irish god. She fits into a special category there. St. Francis and many other saints. For Brian has seen my collection of saints. I have very strong connections to St. Philomena and a lot of others. For some of the secular listeners out there, or, or listeners who aren't as familiar with saints, one of the ways I found easy to kind of grok it is you can think of God's kind of like the head boss, and then you have middle management and upper management. Your saints are basically that. So if you got a problem at work and you go to middle management to have a talk with them, because you don't want to necessarily bother the big boss for a parking dispute over the dedicated parking spot at work. So you take that to middle management. Middle management goes, okay, we'll run it up the chain or deal with it. And Which is the way a lot of people actually deal with the saints. Yeah. St. Anthony of Padua, for example, is infamous, like beyond famous, like straight up him to me, for being able to help you find lost things. When you lose something, first prayer to the saints I ever learned, it was from a Catholic teacher of mine, St. Anthony, St. Anthony, in this hour, show your power, where are my fill in the blank. Try this at home, folks. It's, I know it's a little almost uh, sacrilegious of me to be like, it's kind of a fun parlor trick, but it's it's really cool. It works like it, it works. We, we've had friends that have, are like, we'll talk with them and they'll be like so distressed because they couldn't find a thing for three days. We're like, go, just try this. So they'll try it and we'll get a message later. Oh my gosh, it was, it was there. It just yeah. showed up. Now, I live in a very ecum ecumenical community here, but we even have some Jewish friends that's first response when somebody hears, they hear something's lost is, have you called St. Anthony yet? St. Anthony does not discriminate and is very good at helping you find yeah. lost things. That would be one of the reasons why you might want to go to him. Sometimes it's because of just personality things. Sometimes when something is so bad, you want to cradle up in your mother's arms. So going to Mary, as opposed to Jesus or directly to God, feels more appropriate. Some saints specialize in very particular things and are known for helping with certain things like St. Sebastian and Florin for people who are firefighters, policemen, and the like. St. Christopher, who we will be talking about later this month, for travelers. Also St. Raphael for travelers. St. Raphael gets into a weird category because he's also an angel. But many of the saints have a specialty that they're known for that they generally help out with on a regular basis. Now, remember that asterisk that I put on, of, on this earlier that we don't worship anything that's not God. Well, see, I think a lot of people miss the Christian in Christopagan when they hear me define myself and often try to lump me into just a pagan box. I am a Christopagan. And part of that is I follow the teachings of Jesus. Jesus in John 17 prays to God that we, his followers, may be one in him, that we may be one in God that we may be one in Christ, that we may be one in God. 
there's this unity this, this being built between us and God, between us and the divine. And we already know, just on a basic level, that we are all partakers in the one life. We are all made in the image of God and that we have the one life of God flowing through us. So for those who have gone beyond, in my mind, there is a very fine line between praying to a part of God and praying to God, worshiping a part of God and worshiping God. Mary is the mother of God and is divine. She is. I, I, I don't know what else to say. She's the co-redeemer. She and Christ did accomplish the work of redemption in this world. And any prayers that I give to Mary are prayers to God. Now, others may not see it that way, but this is I, I don't see any other way to see it. So here's another fun perspective on that as well, because also Christ taught us when two or more gathered in my name, I am there with you. So a saint definitely does things in Christ's name. Yes. So if you're praying to a saint, now two of you are now praying yeah. in Christ's name, and therefore Christ is there. So now all three of you are sending that up to God. Congratulations, you got a whole prayer committee. Woo! Saints are a wonderful thing to have if there's something that you're interested in. I believe in traveling this world with a great cloud of witness around us that we have our guides, our guardians, our gods, just everyone we can get in there to make this life just a little bit easier as we're working our way through. I have a very strong affinity for the saints. The saints are actually one of the things that led me into Catholicism. It was the work of St. Louis de Montfort, who introduced me to Mary, and then I developed a strong devotion to him when I read his biography and found him doing some things that I felt were very out of character for a man of his era in defending women who were being beaten by their husbands and the like, which should not have to be lauded. That should just be expected given the time period that he lived in. That feels like it should be counted as one of his miracles in life that he actually stood up for women while he was alive. But why? Why would you want to start collecting saints? One, I love reading saint stories. I have so many books of saint stories. And I still get new books of saint stories. I listen to podcasts that are just recounting the stories and the legends of the saints. Some of them, like, if you like the movie The Crow, not the new remake, which I've heard is really, really bad, but like the original one or the comic or anything, there's a saint for that. I believe it was one of the saints, Brendan. There are quite a few saint Brendans, but I believe it was one of the saint Brendans who was murdered by some Vikings when they ransacked a church. And a flock of crows followed those Vikings and harassed and harried them until they returned all of the stuff to the church. There's actually a couple stories like that. They, they are fun stories to, to read. Not all of them. Some of them are a bit dark. Some of them, like St. Lawrence, I have a great abiding love of St. Lawrence because I love the dark sense of humor that's in his stories. He was martyred by being burned alive, but not in the way you might be thinking, like tied to a stake. They literally put him in a cage over a fire and cooked him. And his reported last words were, I think I'm done on this side. You need to turn me over. It's just like, wow. Which is just, there's a dark humor to that, that I can really respect. Like with everything in spirituality, the point is not to play Pokemon with the gods or with the saints or anything. They are not our pets. They are not our possessions. They are more than just energies in the universe. They are people with personalities of their own. And so anytime you're working with the saints, it's about developing relationship, which is why we're talking about opening space for them. You really need to, especially if there's a saint that you are drawn to, put out a portion of time in your day, in your week, in your month, somewhere in there, not, not too much longer than a month though, if you really want to develop a relationship and develop a relationship with them. Is, is there a novena or a chaplet that is associated with that saint? Yeah, are there certain devotional practices that are associated with that saint? Many saints actually have specific kinds of charitable acts, like uh, working at a soup kitchen that are related to them and considered acts of devotion, reading to children for some, and all the information is very easy to find for each of the saints that are out there with a few exceptions that I've never quite understood online. But you want to actually develop relationship with them because once you start having these relationships, what you're doing is testing to see because the dictum of St. Paul, the many mantras that I 
chant on this podcast and in my regular daily life all the time and in my writing all the time is trust all things and hold to that which is good. Test it. Test it. We're supposed to be testing everything. If you feel a draw to a particular saint, just like with any God or spirit, test that relationship. To do some devotional practices. Talk to them. One of the things that I found with the saints is don't just pray to a saint when you're having a bad day. St. Clair is the patron saint of podcasters, for example. She was a companion of St. Francis's. She's also a patron of TV and radio and podcasts. I've got grandfathered in. Don't just pray to her when you're like, oh, I need help with this thing. But when something's going really well with your podcast, you, th- you know, say a prayer to St. Clair and let her know. When we're talking about relationships, as I like to say, don't be that friend yeah. who will only shows up to complain and present the problems and expect solutions and then disappears and is not there the rest of the times. Or who only shows up when they need something. Or only shows up to to borrow money or or other things and then disappear. Because that's really what we're talking about with the saints. Now, St. Anthony of Padua is a very interesting figure. And yes, he's very, very good for helping you find lost items. But he's also kind of a chill guy who's really fun to talk to, to talk over your problems with. Also, he really didn't like rich people. I'm just going to say, see the life of St. Anthony for that one. It's got a very Elijah vibe. Yeah, I guess that's true. We should have put that caveat in. If you're listening and you're wealthy, give it to the show. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I mean, definitely. But also, so creations like, fast like, com or yeah. go to kofi.com. Oh, that's, uh, but also, don't do the Anthony trick, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> you don't want to. I don't want to invite him into your house. Well, no, wealthy. his problem was people but, that didn't help the poor. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the wealth itself that he had a problem with. It was yeah. those who were abusing their workers and those who were not giving back from the great fortunes that they had. And his stories are interesting and they're really instructive. And given the times that we're living in, I feel like St. Anthony is very much a saint of our time. St. Elijah. Oh, yeah is a wonderful saint to talk to. Just remember, he is fairly particular about things. I almost feel like he spent a lot of time in the woods and is very much befriended with the other crowd. Be respectful, be kind. He'd be a little smitey. A little smitey, if you want to read, there's a wonderful book, I think it was called Stalking Elijah, that has a whole bunch of the traditional tales of Elijah, because Elijah shows up. Elijah is one of those characters that didn't get carried up into heaven on a chariot, and that's the end of his story. Oh no, the story continues after that. It's everything from really, really like, oh, stories to, oh, 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 and how many people were in the building when it burned down? Like, some scary stories with Elijah. I kind of look at him as Elijah is the divine Batman. Your your Batman needs to be able to sit down with a kid who's crying at a, on a swing set and help them through their problem, as well as go out and fight crime. But he's going to do what he needs to do to get the job done. To find. It's kind of Elijah. Great, great saint. Read up on him before you start a devotion to Elijah. So Louis amazing. He was so loving and tender for someone who's so terrifyingly scary at the same time. Once again, you read up his stories and stuff and, it, you know, you can really easily figure out, like, how to start building up that relationship. Because a lot of it has to do with their interests and what they were interested in, what they uh, were passionate about in their lives. St. Jude Thaddeus is another saint that I have a very strong devotion to. I personally believe that he is the half-brother of the Lord, or the full brother of the Lord, whichever makes you happier. I tend to believe that Mary and Joseph had kids after Jesus, but I'm not here to complain about people who think differently. And I have seen, like, true miracles through devotions to him. There is a shrine to St. Jude in Baltimore, my grandfather in, got injured really bad, broke his spine. They told us he would never walk again. I went to the shrine of St. Jude, lit a candle and prayed. And when I got home, we had gotten a call because he had to go to the bathroom and forgot that he couldn't walk and just got up and went to the bathroom. And started walking again. Started walking again. Totally fine. Well, he, I mean, there was mental issues. Yeah. That was before the accident. Yeah. It was not related to, yeah. to those other injuries. Praise to St. Jude and to God for that miracle. The doctors called it a miracle because the x-rays are very clear. His spine was severed. It it wasn't bruised. It was severed. There was a miracle there. You're not going to get a miracle every time. I don't know why miracles are rare, but they are. I have seen a few in my lifetime. 
enough to know that they do in fact happen. Maybe we'll talk about some work I did asking questions about that in a future episode. If you're developing a relationship with any spirit, saint or otherwise, for selfish wounds, I don't think you're going to get that much out of it. And I think that we need to be thinking about the saints that we want to have relationship with. How do we want to relate to these people? How do we want to incorporate them into our lives and really have a profound relationship? Because there, there's a patron saint for everything. If you're interested in getting started, what are you? If you're a chef, you have things like St. Lawrence and St. Martha. Brian vibe more with St. Martha. So we have a St. Martha in our house. That is Martha, Lazarus, and Mary. She is a fun saint. If you're a writer, St. Francis Xavier is a patron saint of writers. So is St. Francis de Sales. There are a lot of St. Francis's out there. That's why we have a lot of O's. There is a saint for pretty much anything. Christo Pagan, St. Francis. Oh, yeah. I, I, I guess one in the room. Yeah. The patron saint of Christo Paganry is St. Francis. Because, and I've said this for a long time, you cannot read the Canticle of the Creatures and not realize the deep and abiding earth-centered religion that that man practiced. Definitely St. Francis, patron saint of Christo Pagans. Definitely. Like the, the Catholic Church, the papacy was very worried that he would start his own religion which is why they denied his first attempt to, to start an order. And the Pope had nightmares that the church would collapse if they said no with the second time. And so they said yes the second time with the revised rule. But yeah, Francis is amazing. The stories about Francis are phenomenal. Highly recommend Bonaventure's Legenda Major. If you find a copy of the Legenda Minor, it's also really good for like regular devotion. But there are not a lot of translations of that. I've been working on a translation of that off and on for years. We'll see if I ever get that finished. Another fun one. If you're in the States and you want someone more contemporary, you have Elizabeth Ann Seton. Oh, Mother Seton. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was our first American saint. It's the first American saint. Because the saints aren't all from ye olden days either. Yeah. Her father actually had the party for... Uh, George Washington when he was elected president for the first time. Help put her in her context. She's in there with the birth of our country, and she is a sweet, sweet soul. Her writings are profoundly simple and beautiful to read. Highly recommend them to you. We have a relic of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in the house. She is near and dear to my heart. Her shrine and actual burial place is in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Shout out to the nuns in Emmitsburg. Yeah, shout out to the nuns in Emmitsburg if you ever hear this. You're probably upset that I have the word Peggy in my name now, but I was able to get the chipmunk out of the building a long time ago. It was an adventure. There are a lot of saints out there. And if nothing else, there's some good stories there. Now, one of the things that we're going to be talking about later this month is some saints that have dipped back and forth from other mythologies into sainthood. I've already mentioned Bridget and Christopher. There are some others that you kind of have to look at and go, hmm, like saints, faith, hope, and charity. As there is a saint, faith, hope, and charity. There's three sisters, not a lot like the Roman graces. Not saying that they're the Roman graces, but so we'll be talking about that on a future episode. But if you haven't already, just take some time and maybe welcome some saints into your life as you haven't. And if it's not your cup of tea, don't worry about it. You know, it is a very important part of my own spirituality, but I understand it's not for everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have a particular favorite saint or saint story that you'd like to share with us, please do so in the comments down below. If you're listening to us on Spotify or YouTube, you can leave a comment right there. If you're listening to us anywhere else, they will not let us know that you comment. So leave a comment there because the engagement is awesome. Then go over to creationspast.com and then click on chat. And there you can leave a comment and we will hear it, see it, and be able to comment back to you. While you're there, if you have a few dollars that you can pass our way, you can join us as a member. You can also support us on Patreon and Kofi. I am CE Dorset on both. Speaking to those of you who have signed up for our newsletter over at creationspass.com, the wonderful folk over at Substack are going to be subsidizing free trials of the paid memberships over there. So all you will have to do is subscribe to our newsletter over at creationspass.com, click on the emails. Read the emails, like the emails, comment on the posts that we're doing over there. 
based on engagement, they are going to randomly be giving out free one month subscriptions. No obligation after that. You don't even have to put in a credit card. All you have to do to accept is install the uh, app, which is a great way to read. I, I subscribe to so many sub stacks. It's not even funny. But here's the thing. It's free for you. They're paying us that month's subscription for each person that they do this with. So if you don't have any money, but would like to support us in other ways, head on over to, to Stack. Make sure you're subscribed to, that's creationspass.com. That's where our Substack is. Subscribe to our newsletter and like and comment on the posts over there so that you get that email offering you that free one month gift membership from them. You don't have to do anything and help us to make you make a little bit of extra capital because we're not in this for the money, but the money does help us keep food on the table, roof over our heads and the lights on. Thank you so very, very much. They're going to start sending those out from October 31st through November 4th. If you're in this window, definitely give it a try. All righty. Thank you all for listening. And as we're going out, well, let's pick a saint. Let's pray to actually suit Elizabeth Ann Seton for the ending of this one. Oh, blessed mother Seton, whose heart was full of charity and whose love went out to all who were in need. Help us, your children in this country and in this world, as we struggle to find peace and harmony in our daily lives. Amen. Amen.